Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to BarCast TV and to another episode of BarCast Daily. Just want to say thank you so much for all the comments and likes y'all have been leaving on the channel. It really helps me improve. This was a user submitted video from Mr. Waffle over here. So shout out to Waffle. Thanks for submitting this replay for review. And wanted to give you guys a channel update for a little bit. I think I might start producing some, uh, some more like tutorial videos or replay analysis from the perspective of one of these high level players. So we'll just watch the entire replay from their perspective and try to make some comments and gain some information on the decisions they're making based off of the information they have on the board. So if that's something you would like to see, leave me a comment, hit the subscribe button, let me know if that's something you would like to see more of, and let's go ahead and get into the replay. So I'll introduce our players spawning in the bottom right side of the map, excuse me, bottom left, PTAC, playing as the Red Cortex Commander. And his opponent spawning in the top right side of the map, playing as the Blue Cortex Commander, it's Waffle. So once again, shout out to Waffle. Thank you so much for uh, sending me this replay. I really appreciate it. Uh, this should be a good game. Uh, I really like this map uh, into battle. We'll take a look at it while these two players get into their opening build order. For those of you who haven't seen this map, uh, it's pretty. It's a pretty solid 1v1 map. There's a decent amount of mass on this map and a lot to contest over here in the middle of the board. So as you expand farther out into the board, you'll get closer and closer to your opponent, of course, and there's these Nice little plateaus on the top and bottom side of the map. So this gives you some nice, uh, I guess, like terrain to fight over. It prevents some movements on this right side, but there's some ramps leading up to this plateau on all three sides. So, And there's these pretty interesting, like, top right and, excuse me, top left and bottom right triple mechs here to expand to. So this will definitely be a point of contention on the map. It's interesting to see that how far those are away actually from the center of the board. So that gives you uh, something to fight over on the edge, edges of the map. And I think that's pretty interesting. It you know, kind of forces you to spread out across the map. And of course, as that happens, as the game develops, you get more and more exposed to counterattacks, raids, airplays, so on and so forth. So pretty cool, pretty cool map. So we'll go ahead and look at our opening player's build orders. Looks like Waffle has gone for the uh, triple solar collector first. I'm wondering if this wind speed was, you know, right below 10 or 5 even. For a period of time so he was probably forced to make these and went into his bot lab so really enjoy the bot lab open on these maps um really mobile fast units can you can get an expansion up way faster and, and we'll take a look at p-tech so he's also open for this bot lab first has 10 wind turbines out already and sitting at about uh relatively even energy produced so that's int i'm sure this will uh that Distance will increase as the game develops because these wind turbines are definitely more efficient than the solar collectors. So PTAC chose to go for a double construction bot and he has a third one on the way. So this is a pretty greedy build power open and he's already walking across the map with his commander. So always interesting to see how these players deviates in their uh, play styles here. And these early com walks are... You know, they have their pros and cons, of course. Like, you're well, you're leaving the base with all your build powers. So, I suppose, instead of putting the mass and resources into extra construction bots, those could be early game grunts. And, coincidentally, Waffle was playing pretty defensively with his units here. So, if he had known how how uh, greedy P-Tac's opening was, yeah, perhaps he would be on his opponent's side of the map. So, just a pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting decision. We see... Waffle already has this one radar. I love this radar positioning here. and gives you so much of this low ground here. So you can see where your opponent's coming at. What direction to position your ground set. And we see he's already created a second radar here on this high ground. So that gives you good coverage of this lane right here on this right side. So really like to see these radar positioning players choose to go to. It's definitely something these higher level players are so good at is getting the information they need to make the proper decisions with their units. So... Take note of these radar positions, and looks like we got a little bit of an engagement here in the middle of the board. So first blood goes to P-Tac, takes out a grunt, not before going down himself, and trying to sneak a run by on the left side as well. So looks like both these run by attempts are going to get cleaned up by Waffle here, and he's massing in the middle of the map. So he's got some grunts going down the center of the board. He's got a couple moving to the right side, and 
Still, we have this little engagement here. Looks like uh, one grunt goes down, so great job. Looks like that grunt's going to position himself at this high ground here. So, p still moving with his commander. He, he went ahead and capped these two mexes in the middle of the board, added on a LLT here, which is great positioning. I like how far back this is from this uh, choke point here. You really have to commit to coming onto your opponent's side of the board before that starts being an effective, uh, being an effective LLT. So, kind of like it, and... Is Waffle going to sneak past here? He he doesn't quite know where the commander's there yet. Let's see if a D-gun goes off. Nope. One grunt goes down and he's going to back away. So good job retaining those units. Looks like P-Tac is rotating to meet this threat here in the middle of the board and have a little sneaky run by here on the bottom side. I think this construction bot at might end up going down here to these three uh, to these three grunts. Let's see if Waffle's able to react in time and spot this uh, construction bot. Yeah, he does. So... Really fast reaction by P-Tac to start moving that back, but that grunt's going to go down, and you might end up losing a couple mechs or two. These grunts are uh, these grunts are already in already in range of these uh, metal extractors here, so one goes down. Is he going to get another one before he's able to catch up? I think so. Shays off one grunt, and yeah, another mechs is going to go down, so great run by there. Getting a construction bot, two mechs, and these, uh, these grunts aren't done doing damage. See, we have one Aggravator already out. p -Tac continuing to add on Grunts and already has one Grave Robber out, so he could definitely go and res that destroyed construction bot, which is, I think, probably the best utility in this uh, in this unit here. I know it's like a res bot, and you can resurrect units in those big reclaims you see in, the, in those you know later starts later parts of the mid game, but I think the real utility in this unit is reclaiming those corpses and specifically reclaiming these construction bots, right? Because they take so long to build, so long to, to what, what, what do they do? They like waddle across the map, something like that. So pretty cool to see. I, I think the greatest utility in, the, in these Grave Robbers is just resurrecting these expanding engineers as they go down. So get those back into position, expanding again. And what is, I didn't quite see what that was. I saw a red dot there. Not really quite sure. And uh, this game's slowing down a little bit, so let's take a look at the player views and the main bases here. We see P-Tac has already capped his high ground here. He's got a run by or a lot of horses on the left side of the map on Waffles Plateau, so should be uh, should be running by. Take a look at the main base. He's still on this one bot lab here, and is forced to add on a couple solo collectors. We can see this wind speed isn't quite cooperating, so always good to be able to balance your economy. Meanwhile, we can take a look at Waffle. He's trying to shoo p -Tac off of this plateau here. He's got another great radar positioning. I love this spot right here. You can cap this mech, add an LLT and a radar here, and it just kind of gives you such dominion over the battlefield. I mean, look at this. Great radar positioning. Take a look at his main base. He still has his commander there. Just adding his build power to this factory, continuing to add on grunts. Looks like he might actually might have moved into the stud production, so... Really wants to get these heavier units out in this uh, approaching the mid game here. Definitely a little more mass than the grunt here, but they have a lot of uh, a lot of health. A little slower moving, but decent range on them too. So they definitely outrange the grunts. So we can take a look at this. Look at take a look at the grunt here. Looks like they have about 230 range, and the thug has about 380. So. Almost 50% more range here. And I hear one aggravator shot going off. Where is that at? Oh my gosh. You can park units up on this high ground here. Can you actually hit that mechs from here? Yeah, you can target that mechs from the high ground. And I'm not sure how that went down, actually. Uh, I didn't see what was targeting that. Perhaps one of those thugs shot it? I'm not sure. But anyway, so... Waffle stepping forward. He's, stepping forward. He's got thugs. Missed that run by here on the top side of the map. That was cleaned up. Looks like this LOT in conjunction with some grunts were able to take out that run by from P-Tech. And Waffle is stepping forward on this plateau, but there's a lot of grunts here. That's going to force him to step back. You can see these thugs kiting back. They can take a lot of shots from these grunts here. So really just moving backwards, trying to get back to the safety of the production in that LOT. And uh, P-Tech is going to choose to retreat. He's pushed, his, pushed the army off his own plateau. That's going to give him access to this reclaim field here, and uh, it's going to really help uh, entrench this position. We see P-Tac's commander scrambling to get up this LLT. Really wants to get these defenses out on the board. He needs to control this plateau from this uh, aggression here. And we see P-Tac's just continue, or Waffle's continuing to add on these thugs. And P-Tac is still in this grunt production here, so looks like he's got a couple thugs trickling out and a lot of build power in the main base. Look at all this. 
Seven construction bots. Adding on wind turbines, adding on construction turrets. So, really wants to get these extra units out on the map. We can take a look at the statistics here. You see, Waffle is about 500 mass up here, nine minutes into the game. So that's uh, that's not the biggest advantage. But we know um, thugs are about 140 mass. These construction bots are 120. So definitely not a negligible advantage in this mass department. And we see, we can see where that advantage is coming from. Waffle's already capped all these mexes in the bottom right side of the map, and I see. Over here in the top left side, it's got another construction bot that's going to be denying another uh, expanding engineer. So great job. Going to take out that uh, second construction bot of the game. So really good to see. And we have a, a run by here in the middle of the board. How didn't I see this? Got eight thugs that have found their way onto b side of the map. He's got this huge arc of units that are trying to, trying to catch up to it. So he takes out one max and he isn't going for the main base. Rightly so. You don't want to just donate all that mass to your opponent. Meanwhile, in the center of the board, Waffle trying to step up on this plateau, but with a commander and four four LLTs, it's going to be a tall order to get to work your way up onto this high ground here. But the real the real battle is here. I mean, you need to get ahead of units as they run by into your base, and you just can't kite units. So it's like these fast grunts are eventually going to be able to run them down, but not before losing another LLT. I'm sure another max is going to go down and. If he gets up on this high ground here, he might actually get a couple of L he might get a couple of wind turbines, so. Got a couple engagements on both sides of the map. We have run buys on the bottom side. Run by on the left side. That pulled P Tac's entire army back, and that's gonna let Waffle push onto this plateau here. We see the commander has abandoned this position. You can't take on this many thugs. Thugs outrange commanders, if I'm not mistaken. So what was that? 380 range. And the commander has got 300, yeah, so definitely outrange that commander unit. And still, these thugs have yet to be dealt with. I mean, donated a lot of mass to your opponent. We can take a look. About 400 mass sitting here, a lot of carcasses. The real threat here is this this like, this line of thugs that are moving their way onto p plateau here. It's forcing this commander to retreat. Doesn't want to lose that waffles in tow. He's looking for the commander. I'm not sure if he knows exactly where it's at. I think he knows what radar signature is. And look at this radar positioning here. This is fantastic. He's finally built a radar on top of his opponent's plateau. And he should be denying all these mexes here. And there's a couple pieces of uh, infrastructure here. Some solar collectors and LOT should be going down. So <clears throat> that's a great catch. See a couple of cheeky grave robbers from P-Tac on the high ground trying to get some reclaim, but really the threat is right here. So many thugs on the board, 18 thugs. Got another 11 over here. Got a couple grave robbers trying to res his friend here. He's going to be uh, reclaiming these units or resing these units rather, trying to get those LLTs back online. It's interesting to see. And P-Tac is going to be trying to send another construction bot to this top left side of the map, but... It's going to be caught by two more grunts here, so. Great job. Catching those expanding construction bots. And we see on the bottom side of the map, see a radar and LLT is trying to prevent this run-by lane on this bottom side of the map. But really, this is the threat of controlling your opponent's plateau. We can see Waffle can, uh, can launch attacks here. And if his opponent was in this bottom side of the map, and of course, move through here. So having your opponent's plateau gives you great access to the board. Great access to be able to run by, and we see so many grunts chasing down the two grunts of Waffle here. Look at these veterans. He's, these grunts are straight killers. Seven kill grunt, one kill grunt. Oh my goodness. So, so much value. You see, all these thugs are finally stepping down off the plateau. They're reacting to uh, p -Tac moving his army away, and there's Shurukens out on the battlefield. How did I miss this? Looks like p -Tac went into uh, Air Factory, and we can see how effective these Shurukens are at paralyzing these thugs, and that's going to force this entire army to retreat. And you can just shave off these units that are paralyzed, so you can see how far how far they fall behind the retreating army. And that was a nice little catch, um, forcing your opponent to retreat. There's so many thugs on the battlefield. What is this? 43 thugs. 43 thugs versus 10 and 19 grunts. So I want to give the standing army advantage to Waffle here. And we can see he's mixing these thrashers, these anti-air bots, into his unit composition. Scurrying their way across the map, trying to get into their army composition here. And 
that's gonna that's gonna trigger him to make it another attack i'm sure waffle thinks he has an advantage here and this is a great counter attack look how effective these shurikens are paralyzing these lts can let these grunts come in shave off that little expansion waffle is trying to get on the high ground and i want to say he could push down this push down to this expansion here yeah and that's what he's going to do we see how we see these shurikens stepping forward paralyzing these lts looks like one's going to end up going down no i'll that's just so good. Two Shurikens can take out three three LLTs, and these Grunts can run in uncontested. Take out the LLTs, take out the Maxes, so great job. You might end up rotating around this top side of the map and try and get a counterattack, but there is a huge T1 army, 47 thugs. p commander is in danger here. Look at the density of units, too, so really good job stacking these units up together, moving as one. And this might be the beginning of the end here. Um, p seems a little bit outgunned here. This is so many thugs. You can see those rays. You can see those movement orders coming into position. It looks like Waffle is just stepping forward. He's making a play for the main base here. Is this going to seal a deal? We see Grunts coming out on the right side to flank, but p is uh, p is forced to retreat here. This is so many thugs moving towards his main base. We have uh, Thrashers in tow. It's going to prevent those Shurikens from from evening up this fight here. You see the Thug army is completely surrounded on both sides, but the Grunts on the right have been taken care of. The flanking Thugs on the left side getting gunned down, and p army has been cleared out. He just has his commander left and a handful of Thugs, so... Waffle's going to step forward. He's going to press his advantage. Can't step in front of these thugs. He can't get this D gun off. And finally, his commander is being targeted. He's going down. 10%, 5%, 2% help. Finally goes down. So, great game, Waffle. Good unit control. Good, uh, good game sense there to press his advantage when he knew he had a uh, knew he had an army advantage. So, thanks for watching, y'all, and see you in another Barcast daily.